Hello people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to a new video. So today I am going to teach you 8051 microcontroller addressing modes. One second, you will say, sir, we have already seen addressing modes of 8051. Of course we have. But that was me doing it on the blackboard where I taught you addressing modes as a theory topic. I taught you every addressing mode with its example. But then I was just doing it on the board. So all you had to do was believe me, there was no other option. But today it's going to be different. We are going to do addressing modes on the simulator. Every instruction, every addressing modes example, I'm going to execute and show you how it works. This is where I'll show you and you'll see for yourself what's the difference between using hash 25 and 25. What's the difference between writing 25H and just 25 or writing R0 and at the rate R0. They're all valid but they all do different things and that's how we create all those addressing modes. So I'm going to show you every addressing mode along with its execution. We're going to play with the registers, you're going to play with the numbers, run the programs, you're going to create loops. Yes, indirect addressing mode. I hope you remember the most powerful addressing mode where you can access a series of locations. For that we need a loop. So I'm going to show a loop and I'll show you the effect on the memory locations, what happened when you use indirect addressing mode and most importantly, the last addressing mode, indexed addressing mode, where address is given as a sum of two registers, A plus DPTR. If you remember, that was used to access lookup tables. So I'm going to create a lookup table and I'm going to show you how that lookup table is accessed by the program. Now that is one thing that you use in practically every program that is uh, related to the real world applications. You need lookup tables for temperature sensing, for any kind of display, LED display, LCD display, waveform generation and so on. So once for all, learn how to create and use a lookup table on the simulator. So writing programs on paper is good, yeah, but that's how we start. That's not where you want to end. You want to build your career as an embedded system developer, as an IoT developer or anything related to modern technology. You have to write the programs on the computer. You got to play with your code, run it, optimize it. When you use the simulator, it shows you how much time your program took to execute, how many microseconds it took. So when you have a simulator, you can optimize your program, use different algorithms and see which works the best, which takes the least amount of time and gives you the perfect result. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's start with the first addressing mode, immediate addressing mode. I'm going to shift it to the simulator screen and I'll keep talking to you in the middle as and when required. Okay, let's go ahead. So this is our simulator. I'm using Edsim simulator. You could use a uh, microvision uh, keel simulator, whichever one you want, as long as the instructions are the same. It's 8051, whichever interface you like. It's like doing C programming. Some people use X code, some people use, uh, uh, what is that, VS code, some people use the Turbo C, which I love the most because it's raw. Anyway, some other day about it. Now, let's start. ORG uh, zero. Let's jump here. Here is a label and end. So this is a formality that you need to do to get your program running. ORG0, I have explained all of this. These are similar directives. Long time back, we have explained them, but still just to refresh your memory, ORG0 tells the assembler start the program from location 0. So whatever you write over here will be stored at location 0 in the program memory. Wherever you want your execution to get over, you write as jump to a label which is at basically the same place as jump here will create an infinite loop over here which means the program will not go ahead of this which means your program is over you can write things here you can write code here like functions and call those functions from your program it will execute the function and come back to your program by itself the program will not cross this line but of course if you have jumped to it or if you've called anything in this area it will be executed the end finally indicates the end of the program Anything written after this end will not be seen by the assembler. What do you write after this end? You can write the name of the author, the logic of the program, further improvements, uh, limitations, X, Y, Z, whatever you want to write. In formal programming, you can write the name of the company and blah, jazz, whatever you want. Anyway, there is no rule about writing anything after this end. So it's up to you, whatever you feel like writing. Don't write anything, doesn't matter. Now, let's start. Uh, 
this is a comment that I've written just to tell you that first we are doing examples of immediate addressing but I'm so excited to show you how this works because I know this is like unleashing a student in a playground once you know how to use a simulator there is no end to your own creativity you start liking this you'll spend so much time on it and write excellent programs okay let's start it's a pleasure that's my opportunity to teach you all this move a comma hash 25 H if you remember this was the example that we took for image addressing mode uh, first up this language is not case sensitive you can write anything uppercase or lowercase doesn't matter I have a habit of writing in lowercase uh, or any one case you want write everything in uppercase also if you want don't mix cases just for the sake of readability it doesn't make any difference though so move a comma hash 25 why have we put a hash to indicate that 25 is data remember image addressing mode means data is there in the instruction so when I execute this instruction a register as you can see as of now a register has the value 0 when I execute this instruction a should get the value 25 H let's execute I'm pressing the button run there you go a has got the value 25 so that's your first addressing mode of course very simple it was now you'll play with it and we're going to go much deeper the bigger examples will come in register addressing direct addressing indirect addressing and the biggest one will come in index addressing this of course was just the start now First up, big warning to students. There's a big difference between writing 25H and 25. Are we clear? Don't be lazy. Don't be, don't give a half-hearted effort when you're writing programs. Be serious of what you're doing. Move A comma hash 25 is also a valid instruction. But here, since you did not put the H, it will treat 25. It means the assembler. It will treat 25 as a decimal number and what will get stored is the hex equivalent of 25d which is 19 i hope you know how to calculate this orally 16 into 1 is 16 remainder is 9 so 1 9 okay <laughs> anyway anyway some other day have i've taught you that in some other video anyway so now if i run it you will see a will not get 25 h it will get 19 h because it treated 25 as a decimal number and substituted the hexadecimal value so yeah if you want to work in decimal go ahead but if you wanted to work in hexadecimal which is what most of our programs do and you forget to write the h that's a disaster on the face of it it don't doesn't give you an error so students think oh my god what did i do everything is correct why am i not getting the answer it's the details that you missed out on. So always be in a habit of writing the H. For the last time, if you don't write the H, the number will be treated as a decimal number. In fact, you can also, I'm just running this just to show you. Yeah, A got 25, right? Because we wrote 25 H. You could also give the number in binary form. 25 is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And now when you run it, it will still get 25 because that's basically 25 H. That's just the binary form of it. If you think it was 25 from the previous program and it's a fluke, no, it's not a fluke. I'll run it now. Change it to 27 as you can see, 0, 1, 1, 1. And if I run it, A over here, focus here, A will get 27. There you go, A got 27. Okay, so you can give the number in binary form also. Of course, a student would say, sir, why on earth would you want to type a number in binary when it's the same thing could be written as 27H? Of course, under normal circumstances, you won't. But when you do port-related programming, which you will when you become a serious programmer, when you start doing projects, you're going to work with your ports. At that time, you get some data, you want to mask some bits, you're going to use an instruction for masking. At that time, it is much better to give it in binary form because it's easily readable by you. You can see which bits you're masking. Okay, this is something you'll use later, but I just taught you right now that, yeah, you can give the number in binary form also. Now, you can do many more things, but I don't want to overload you with information. Uh, now, what happens if you forget the hash? The more important thing over here to learn immediate addressing mode means data is there in the instruction the fact that you have given data is indicated by the hash if you remove the hash is it a valid instruction come on please answer is it a valid instruction yes of course hundred percent valid but now it'll do something else now it is treating 25 as an address and it will get you the data from location 25 look here this is location 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. You can see, right? The row 20 and the element 5. So 25. You understand that, right? Come on. Yeah. So it is right now 0. When I run this program, A will get 0. You thought A would get 25, but A got 0 because now that 25 is treated as an address. In fact, let's just do something. Let's populate location 25. Move 25H, comma hash 33H. 
now when I run this first location 25 will get 33 and then a will get the value of location 25 which means a also will get 33 let's run location 25 got 33 and a also got 33 are you clear also I just want to show you how single stepping works because like I said I'm just too excited I'm teaching this to you uh, I know it's going to make a big difference to you if you're serious about being an embedded engineer uh, if you want to make a career in embedded systems anyway so I'm making now location 25 initializing it with the value 44 and then when I run the program a should get 44 but this time we won't run it we will single step it now this is again a technique that you will use not now but when you do serious programming big programs you run your program you see the result it's not the result that you expected something has gone wrong it's the program is too big to just look at it and figure out what's wrong here you want to do single stepping you want to execute the program line by line and see what happened at every instruction so for that instead of pressing your usual uh, run button you press the button look here you press the button assemble so your code has been assembled now the same button changes to step now press step so you execute every instruction so look here from our previous program location 25 was 33 when I execute this first line step location 25 became 44 a has not changed location 25 has become 44 now when I do the second step a will get that 44 are we clear just showing you how to play with this assembler now okay this is one example if you remember when I taught you addressing modes in the theory video I also sh showed you example of a 16 bit number because that's how it is you want full marks from this answer you need to show two examples two distinct two interestingly different examples of every addressing mode so we saw 8 bit register like a move a comma hash 25 H okay just to show you the same example again run yeah a got 25 now take a 16 bit register the only 16 bit register that you are allowed to play with is dptr move dptr comma hash 0200 or any 16 bit number that you want now this is your dptr look it is 0000 0 x means hexadecimal so it's 0000 okay so this is your dptr which is all zeros as of now when i run this it will be 0200 which means dph will be 0 2 and dpl will be 0 0 run that's it that's what you got you want to change the number make it 1 2 3 4 as an example 1 2 3 4 run 1 2 and 3 4 and so on whatever number you want to put you can put okay so those were examples of immediate addressing mode like i said this is the simplest one now things are going to get much better i'm going to show you register addressing mode direct addressing mode where you're going to play with the whole memory indirect addressing mode where we're going to create loops and access a series of memory locations and lastly indexed addressing modes to access access lookup tables all of that will be there in the remaining part of the lecture at the beginning i wanted you to know how to see and how to, i want you to see how to use an assembler so i showed you all this now you want to watch the whole video come on my website www.bharatacharyaeducation.com the link is given down below click on the link first of all register yourself as a user now once you register from the main menu you'll see all the courses i make i teach several processors in fact i teach more processors than what i've made i will be making video courses on the others as well so over there you'll see the course of 8051 this video of course is then the 8051 microcontroller course so select 8051 course click the subscribe button make the payment and your course becomes active what do you get in the course there are about 40 videos already. I keep making more and more videos. In fact, there's another video that I'm going to make very soon, probably in a day or two, uh, flag register, where I'm going to show you again on the simulator. I've done a video on the flag register, but that was a theory video. There's only so much you can do in a theory video. In the assembler, there is, when you use a simulator, there is no end to it. I can keep giving different examples, run it, show you on the spot how the flags change. Anyway, so yeah, we keep making more and more videos. So there are about 40 videos right now. We have covered everything from the beginning introduction architecture in the addressing modes again on the simulator itself uh, the whole instruction set programs you've done many programs on the board some programs on simulator too then timer based programs intra based programs serial paid pro paste serial port based programs along with their theory 
LCD interface, LED interface, matrix keyboard, A to D converter, D to A converter, all these interfaces with their programming. There's no point doing those interfaces if you don't know how to write the program for them. So all of that is covered. Plus with every video you get a PDF. In the PDF is all the theory that you need. If there are diagrams, the whole circuit diagrams are there. If there are programs, all programs with comments on every instruction, they're all there. So basically you don't need any other study material, no textbook, nothing at all. Watch the video, learn the topic. Open the PDF, prepare the answer for the exam. Plus, since we're talking about the exam, you also get Viva questions. You also get MCQs, separate PDFs of Viva questions, MCQs for the whole topic, which again, we keep updating. As in when I hear a new question, an interesting question that I figured out, immediately I'll add it in that. So what you get from the site is always updated and has the latest, the best of the questions. Anyway, plus you get a certificate that you learned from us. Most importantly, you get direct access to me. This is my WhatsApp number. Whenever you have a doubt, Click on that or text me. The link for WhatsApp is also given in the description. Anyway, text me your doubt. Uh, the moment I'm free, I'll reply. Generally, I reply by the end of the day. I reply to everybody. In case I missed on one day, no problem. Remind me the next day, you'll definitely get a reply. Okay. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. We're going to continue with our remaining addressing modes and with the remaining learning of 8051. I really hope you learn 8051 the right way it's supposed to be. Not the cheating way, not uh, just a few videos here and there and that's it, okay, I've got the knowledge, I'm done. This is your foundation. If you want to do serious programming, if you see yourself as an embedded systems designer or an IoT engineer or a ML or an AI engineer, everything requires microcontrollers. This is where you start off from. Just to give you a heads up, when you learn higher microcontrollers like ARM and PIC, Nobody teaches you how serial communication works or how interrupts work or how timers work, how counters work. It is assumed that you have learned all of this with 8051 and mastered it. That's when you have got the guts to learn a higher microcontroller. So if you plan to make a career in this field, this is one platform which you have to be absolutely strong and have a commanding knowledge of, okay? Which is what you're going to get once you take our course. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Do well. We continue with this. <laughs>